Hi, welcome to another video. I've got some old cameras in the loft. We're going to go and choose one. We're going to order some Ilford film, black and white, and hopefully it comes before the grandkids, because grandkids are coming in a couple of days' time, and we can take some pictures. I'm going to order some chemicals, and we're going to develop the film, and basically see if the camera's any good. Uh, I've got quite a number of cameras in the loft, so we'll go and choose one. These are old cameras, film cameras, haven't been about for a number of years. Uh, let's go and choose one. show you around, uh, see what cameras I do actually have. Yeah. Um, up the top I have, these are, are the older cameras, these are FD lenses and FL lenses. The oldest camera I have, SLR, is the FX. This, if it's in focus, This is uh, a 1964 Canon FX. It was made for the 1964 uh, Olympic Games, which were held in Japan. And it saw the start of Japan's domination of the SLR world. I have uh, the AE-1 quite a few different ones, the FT um, we'll try one of these next time actually but I'm not going to try one this time because uh, they need light seals replaced and a lot of work doing to them this is a motor wine for the AE one or the AT one or the AL one um, down the bottom these are all or most if you can see that these are the EF lens mount cameras, apart from the T70, the T80 and the T50 which is somewhere, which I can't actually see where it is, but it's here somewhere. Other than that, uh, the rest are EF, ah, EFM, I think this will be EFM, let me swap hands, the EFM. I think this will be the one that we try. Let me get it in focus. I can't have it come too close. But this will be the one that we try. Uh, it's a fully manual or fully automatic or shutter priority camera. There's no LCD screen. Um, I'm not sure when it was built, but I'll go into the specs of the camera a little bit more. There's no full minute, so don't worry. It's a motor wind, that's why it shoots when I press the button. And it'll take the same lenses as what I use on my digital 7D Mark II. So we'll put a film in, we'll clean it off, we'll put a film in and we'll give it a go. I'll go into some specs for you if you're interested in that sort of specs for it. And we'll take it from there. Uh, production of the EFM started in Japan in September of 1991. Uh, the size of it is 148 millimeters long, 97 millimeters tall, and 68 millimeters wide. It weighs approximately 390 grams, and that's without the lens. It's a 35 millimeter film camera which produces pictures of 36 millimeters long by 24 millimeters tall. Here on the right of the camera as you're looking through the viewfinder is the aperture dial which ranges from 1 to 32. There is also an ISO setting on this dial and once chosen you use the up and down arrow 
to go up and down the ISO settings. It's capable of ISO range from 6 to 6400 in one third increments. Next to the aperture dial is a frame counter and this will allow you to see how many frames you have left and how many you've used. Once you reach the end of the film the film will auto rewind back into the canister. On the left of the camera is the shutter dial. This ranges from 2 seconds to 1 one thousandth of a second with a bulb setting and a flash setting. It can sync with a flash at 1 90th of a second. On the bottom of the camera is the battery compartment and the type of battery it takes is two CR5 6 volt lithium batteries. On the back of the camera you can see uh, the two buttons on the right hand side. Uh, this is the self timer on the extreme right and, and the AE lock button. These two buttons also double up as the up and down button which allows you to choose the ISO, uh, the partial metering and also the exposure compensation. The viewfinder has uh, some information at the bottom of the screen. Uh, it shows you the aperture and the shutter values that you've chosen. It uh, shows you whether the flash is ready to fire. It has exposure compensation scale, a low battery indicator and it also has an AE lock indicator. That concludes the overview of the EFM. Uh, all I need to do now is give it a good clean and insert a film and we'll give it a try. Have a look, see what we've got. I'm hoping this is uh, the film stock I ordered. <coughs> There's some batteries, two CR5, there should be two of them, or oh, one of them. Yeah, one of them, sorry. CR2, two of them, and CR123, two of them. We got a roll of inferred pan F, which is uh, fast film. It's just low film actually, it's a 50. ISO 50. We got Elford FP4 which is 125, ISO 125 which again is a fast fill, a slow fill we've got Elfid FP4 so I've got two of them and a Delta 100 which is a 120 film Okay. <clears throat> I'll show you the difference between 35mm film which comes in a canister and a 120 film which comes in a roll. Now obviously the negatives are a lot bigger on the 120 film. And put one of these FP4s into the EFM and I'll do that in a in a 
the review of the EFM on a two part uh, basis because obviously I'm going to have time, I need time to develop the film which I might show you how to how to develop uh, so I'll go and put this in the in the camera and we'll take it from there, we'll see you when it's all done, bye